Guys, happy Friday. Hope you all had a beautiful week. I'm thrilled that you're here for today's DIY because it is so cool and so sexy and so comfy and and so on trend. It's really all of the things. Uh, for those of you that are new, if this is your first video, my name is Orly and this is the DIY designer. I do really fun DIY fashion and home decor. I take sort of high-end inspos and hack them down into something super simple that we can all do together. And today's is one of my favorite. I have been wearing them like crazy. We are making velvet plaid bell bottoms. Now, little disclaimer. You can make these out of any fabric you want, as long as it's stretch. The reason I love these so much is because we're actually gonna be taking a pair of pants that we already own, that we love the way the waist fits and the hips and the leg and all of that. I'm gonna show you how to knock off your own favorite pants and convert them into bell bottoms. So when you guys make this pattern, you'll end up basically with a two for one pattern. One that can be worn as just regular sort of straight leg or maybe pseudo flared leg pants. And another that can be worn as these really epic bell bottom statements, which are so in right now and really, really flattering because the wide leg sort of balances the hips. It's just so much fun. And I wore them all day yesterday and I got stopped a bunch. Everyone was like, where are those pants from? like I made them. Um, now one quick note on the velvet. If you are going to do velvet, obviously number one, make sure that it's stretch. And number two, you're going to need a little bit more fabric than you would need if you're not doing velvet. Because what you'll come to see is that velvet has a right, not a right and a wrong side, but like a light and a dark side. So at one angle, the velvet color looks really, really dark. And if you flip it the other way, you get the sort of highlighted side of that velvet, which means that all of your pieces need to be cut going the same direction. You can't flip the pattern like you normally would. So that's just something to keep in mind. You're going to need a little bit more fabric in order to do that. And if you're going to do plaid, whether it's velvet or or not, you're going to need to take extra time to make sure that you are lining up all of your lines and your plaid pattern. There is nothing worse. Like I've been wanting to buy a bunch of these from like Urban Outfitters and they're just made so cheaply that all the patterns are off and it just looks cheap. It looks wonky. So you really want to take your time lining up each one of those patterns. That way the print just sort of wraps around your body looks really flattering. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. I can't wait. All right, let's get started making our pattern. You can use wrapping paper, fabric, anything you have, as long as it's wide enough to create a front and a back and long enough that it's the length that you want. I'm just using some old linen fabric. Now, these are the pants that I'm actually gonna use to create my pattern, but as I was lining it up to show you things, I could see that you can't really see on the black. I was trying to show you how to fold the seam so that you only get the front and the back, but that wasn't working. So I'm gonna show you on these pants, although this is not the pattern. You're gonna take your pants and you're gonna fold them in half. Grab the crotch, but you need to make sure that when you're doing the front pattern that you're only grabbing the inseam that is the front. So see how there's that excess? I need to tuck that in so that when I'm looking in the front, I see that seam going straight across the side. That's how I'm gonna create my front by only using the seams that are in the front. So you're gonna lay it flat. You can see I've got the excess of that back seam pushed in. I'm doing the same thing on my side seams so that I'm folding it right on the seams so that as I trace it, I'm only tracing the front part of that pattern. So folding your pants in a way that is hiding any part of the back seam while you're doing it is what's going to allow you to create your pattern. Now you would do the opposite. You would fold them the other way so that the back is visible. You would pull out the seams so that the inseam is folded only on the back side and you can see how much larger that is. So I'm gonna do it on these pants. I'm gonna fold them in half. I'm gonna grab the inseam so that I only have the front visible. Take your time when you're doing this. This is obviously one of the most important steps. So just make sure that everything is laying flat and you're only looking at the front pattern piece when you're doing the front and the back when you're doing the back. Now these happen to be bell bottoms, but I'm pinning out the bell bottoms so that you can see if you're just using a regular like straight leg or slightly flared pant like that, I will show you how you actually create your bell bottom from that. So basically I've got my front, I am tracing everything directly onto my pattern and using a pencil. I'm gonna use a marker right now so you can see what the actual shape of the pattern is and that is the pattern. That is my front. 
Now I'm doing the same thing with the back. I'm folding it so that all of the back seams are visible, pulling them out so that again, I am tracing just a back and I'm basically knocking off or rubbing off a pattern from a pair of pants that I love. And now it's time to just mark where I'm gonna cut the back leg open to so that I can actually add in that gourd, creating my bell bottom later. I think that it's most flattering to put it right at the break of the knee so that measurement will change based off each of you and how tall you are. Next, cut out your pattern and you have a front piece and a back piece and we're ready to start cutting. So this is the velvet fabric I'm gonna use to start. Like I said with velvet, there's a light and a dark side. So you wanna go in front of the mirror and decide which side you want based off your fabric. If your fabric is a solid color, then you can fold your fabric in half and cut two fronts and two backs at the same time. If your fabric is printed, like the plaid I'm gonna do later, you can't do that because you're gonna need to see the print when you cut. Now, I made a couple of mistakes on this one because this was sort of my like sample. I was gonna be making it, making adjustments to it. You can see one of the mistakes that I made here is I put the two pieces too close together. So at the very bottom on the left one there, I wasn't able to extend that flare. It all of a sudden went straight, you see, because I put them too close together. Again, no big deal. I'm able to kind of tweak it and make adjustments, but you will see that on this pair, this is the pair that I'm sort of learning on so that I can perfect it for the next one. All right, so once they are together, you're gonna sew them. You're gonna sew, that's your center front, and that is your center back. When you guys are sewing stretch velvet, you wanna put it on like a slight zigzag stitch. It doesn't need to be a super zigzag, but you wanna give it a little bit of that zigzag and that's gonna allow these to continue to stretch without having any of the seams pop. You can also do this with an overlock machine if you have one. Now you're gonna take those two pieces and you're gonna put them face to face. This is our front and our back. Those are our center seams. And now I'm gonna pin together my side seams. Once everything is pinned all the way down to the hem, we're gonna sew in the exact same way, a slight zigzag stitch or an overlock or stretch stitch, whatever you've got, making sure there is stretch is important. All right, so my side seams and my center seams are done and now it's time for the inseam. So for the inseam, always make sure to line up the two crotch seams in the front and the back so that that's nice and even. I always start there and then I go down the right leg, go back to the center and go down the left leg. And that's actually how I like sewing it as well. I feel that it's a more even um, inseam if I always start at the crotch and then go down one leg, go back to the crotch and go down the other leg. All right, now it's time to see how they fit. I gotta say, pretty darn good for the first crack at it. They are a little big and that's because the fabric is just super stretchy. So what I will do is I'll take these in and then I will sort of apply that change to the actual pattern for all of my future ones. Now it's time to cut open that slit in the back. This is to create our gourd. Now I'm using the pair of pants that I have as um, a pattern, but basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna decide how wide do I want it? Let's say you decide I want that to be 20 inches. So that bottom is going to be 20 inches wide. Then based off your height, you'll say, how long do I need it to be? Okay, from my knee to the floor with heels is 18 inches. All right, so I put a line up at 18 inches and I connect it until I have a triangle. That's basically how you're gonna grade the cord, how wide do you want it and how tall that you want it. Then I recommend taking that pattern piece and folding it in half so it's perfectly symmetrical. That way, when you cut out your fabric, you are a perfectly even pizza slice. Now it's time to sew in our pizza slice right into our pants. This is the only part that I would say can be a little tricky. And so if you need help with this, this is something that you can maybe use some fabric glue and do it in a little bit different of a way because what you're gonna do is you're gonna do them face to face. You're gonna sew all the way up and when you get to that corner, you're gonna leave your needle in. You're gonna lift your presser foot, rotate the pants around until you basically get access to the other side of the triangle. Then you're gonna come back down the other side of the triangle. I put them on and the bell bottom looks great. I actually want them to be raised a little higher. So on the pattern, I will cut open that slit just a little bit taller but you can see they've got great movement and I'm in a pretty good place here. Time to do the waistband. Now for you guys, when you do your waistband, two things will dictate that shape. Number one, you want it to be double the width of whatever elastic you're gonna use so it can encase the elastic. Number two, you want it to be as wide or a little bit smaller, if that's comfortable, as the very top of your pants. You don't want it to be any bigger than that or you'll end up with sort of a gathered ruched effect, which we don't want. We want super, super sleek. Take that piece, your um, waistband, you're gonna sew one seam so it becomes a tube, 
and you're gonna hide that seam in the back. So line up the center back seam of your pants with the seam that is in your waistband, and you're just gonna pin it on top and sew it all the way around. Then when you fold it over, you can see how nice and clean that was, and now all we have to do is add in our elastic. Two ways to add in the elastic. One is you sort of lay the elastic in and then sandwich the fabric around it, sewing it all at one time, or you can sew the waistband all the way around, leaving an opening that you can then feed the elastic in with a safety pin and sew it up afterwards. Whatever your comfort zone is, but that pair is basically done. Now it's time to apply those changes to my pattern. So I shaved off a little bit off the front, which was about an inch, which will reflect to two inches when I cut two of them, right? The other thing was it was a little tall once I added in my waistband, so I cut off about an inch off the top as well. Then I cut the pattern piece in the back to slice open the leg so that I've got that part set. Now, when you are cutting out of your plaid, this is super important. You're only gonna cut one front and one back with your pattern piece. Now, take the piece that you cut and you are gonna use that as a guide because you have to line up all of those, the plaid um, pattern, right? Anything that's got like a gridded pattern, you need to line it up and look at it and make sure that everything when you cut both is gonna be perfectly lined up when you sew it. So you need to actually use the first one you cut as a guide. Now we are gonna do the same thing. Sew your center front and your center back. And there you go. That's pretty darn good. Those line up really, really well and this is gonna be really flattering on. Now, one other thing is what I did is since I cut the line in my pants already, I'm actually gonna sew in my bell bottoms before I sew the pants together. It's just easier because I don't have to deal with the front. So now my back is done with the bell bottom in there. Now I take my front and I'm sewing them together. At this point, you guys can either sew the inseam first or the side seam, whatever you want. I think on the red ones, I did the side seams first. On this one, I did the inseams first. Doesn't matter. You're just gonna follow all of the same steps. Same thing with the waistband. Sew in your elastic and this one's done, you guys. Hem and where. Alrighty then, that is it, that's it. I can't wait to model these for you. They are so flattering and sexy and comfy on. I really, really hope that you guys make this one. They really are absolutely incredible. If you liked this video, I hope that you'll hit the like button and subscribe if you're new. Maybe share it with a friend if you are so inclined, that would be super helpful. And I just wanted to take an extra second to thank everybody that supported the merch collection, the creator collection. If you started receiving your pieces, please send me a photo um, at Orly Shani on Instagram. Just DM them to me. I am dying to see all of the pieces that you got. That support meant so much to me. And I appreciate each and every one of you. So thank you very much and um, enjoy the show. Baby.